Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Why Girlfriends English. Today we're going to talk about five language learning habits that you really need to acquire English. And then we're going to talk about four ways that you can stick to it and be successful in learning English. We often get excuses from our students about learning a language and a lot of them are valid. They say mm. things like, I don't have an English teacher in my city or I don't have anyone to practice with or it takes too much time or mm. I don't know what to write about. And all of these are decent excuses except that it assumes that we don't have the time in our schedule to fit English in. And this is just the wrong way to look at English. Yes. If you are looking to be able to pour three hours a day into studying English, realistically speaking, it's probably not going to happen, especially if you're a working professional or you have a family or you get interrupted all the time. Unless you are dedicated to studying English, it's likely not going to happen. So we're going to talk about some ways that you can realistically build this in. The main thing that you need to consider is that the key to learning English is to have consistency, to build it into your life and your lifestyle. So that means consistency in time, consistency in just showing up and actually doing it, consistency in practice, consistency in, in doing English, essentially, which is terrible grammar, but it's, it's acceptable <laughs> grammar, right? In order to just English, you've got to do English, and that means you've got to build it into what you're already doing. Because honestly, in terms of lifestyle, most of us might not have the time to carve out to dedicate significant portions of time to study English the way we studied in schools. And so the idea here is consistency. It's about forming a habit, but not just a habit, but a lifestyle. And so that's where we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you guys five ways that you can do this today in your life, in your lifestyle, no matter how crazy or busy it is, because we definitely understand that. Everything that I'm going to give you guys today Definitely look in the description below. I've included some links to some sites where you can get this, these things and put together a playlist or put together some things ahead of time to make sure that you actually do it. First, we're going to talk about listening. Mm -hmm. Of all the skills, language learning skills with listening, speaking, reading, and writing, I personally believe listening is the most important because mm -hmm. without listening, you're not going to know how to speak properly. Without listening, you're not going to get the idea of acceptable grammar. Without listening, you're not going to be able to learn the vocabulary it takes to be able to write. So yeah. definitely important. And this is the one that if you if you can only do one, do something with, with listening. One of the ways you guys can practice listening on a regular basis is choose a podcast or a YouTube channel that you really like that already interests you and listen to that consistently. Mm -hmm. And this is a really easy one. That's why we're here on YouTube to serve you guys. That's why yeah. we enjoy watching stuff on YouTube is because we enjoy the information and we enjoy the personality. So what you guys can do to practice listening is to choose one ahead of time so you're not scrambling to try to find which YouTuber you're going to li listen to or which podcast you're going to listen to. Find one and work through it, listen to it, and try to really think about what you're listening to. Not just put it on the background and count it as listening, but actually listen to it. Honestly, if you are not one to really listen to podcasts, I'm not personally, it's just not going to work for you. If, if you don't like watching YouTube, one, how did you find us? But two, <laughs> like... Don't don't plan to watch YouTube videos. Mm. If you are somebody who likes to watch TV series but not movies, watch English TV series. Don't plan to watch a lot of things that you don't normally watch in your own language anyway because it's not going to work. It's not going to feel natural. It's going to feel like studying and you're not going to enjoy it. Mm. So make sure that you only do these habit changes for things that you already do in your own language. That's going to make it a lot easier to acquire English. Second one. Pick those TV series, pick those movies that you like, make a playlist. Music is the mm. same thing. Make a list of music that you like. Don't listen to English rap if you don't always enjoy rap already. Mm. <laughs> don't listen to country music if you don't enjoy country music. So pick a genre that you really like already in your own language and expand your horizons, broaden your understanding of different cultures by collecting a playlist from English artists that do the similar type of music and commit yourself to learning the lyrics for one song at a time at a month during a month. Mm. It would be a great way to study because if you're always listening and you're listening and listening, it happens all the time to English speakers. They listen to songs, they like songs, they even sing songs, but then when they actually think about the lyrics, some of them are like, I can't believe my kid is, usually it happens when your kid 
is singing the song and you're like, wait Ooh. a second, is that what it says? <laughs> and music is especially good because it carries a lot of the paralanguage for you with the music. Mm -hmm. So if you're really in tune with that and if you, if you understand music, if you already play or sing music, that's really valuable for you because you, you understand that some words carry certain meanings and other words carry different meanings. So music is a good way. Make a playlist so that you can play it when you're on when you're in your car or when you're traveling when you're walking so again you don't have to find it right before you go on a walk yes. you can just press play and put your headphones on or put your earbuds in and just do it and then go and do something while you're washing dishes and it, again it's enjoyable it's taking that thing you enjoy and then putting english on top of it. it's doing english the next one we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about reading so of the four skills you've got two that are taking in and two that are producing so Listening and reading are taking in English while speaking and writing are producing it. So the other taking it in is reading. And so a lot of us read news articles in our own languages. So take one of those and do it in English instead. I've got a link down below for you guys to check that out. This is a classic one, but make sure you actually do it. Mm. Okay, that's very helpful. It's relevant. A lot of us want to stay current on world events or the events in our own country, our own communities. Do that, but in English. You're already going to be doing it, right? It's the same thing with reading a book or a short story or something like that. That is also important to do. But the cool thing about reading fiction or nonfiction uh, in English is that you're learning about the culture. Mm. Pick classics that we already study in our own schools, and you're going to be learning about our culture. You're going to be learning lots of references and maybe the source of some idioms and phrases you hear in TV shows or movies. You'll be able to pick them up from the original stories they came from, yeah. which is super cool. There's a link to a short story source for American literature down below. Uh, definitely check that out because short stories are not always short, <laughs> but I can tell you there's a, many of us would recognize them or know where something came from if you told us if we got to talking to you about it. So. Yeah. And listening and reading both have a really good skill that you acquire when you do them regularly, which is that you can find out the patterns. So yes. for example, in a news article, it may use words that you would never use in your life. And that's fine if you don't, if you don't bother to memorize them. But if you do reading on a normal, regular basis, then you'll be able to find out those normal words that people use in that, in, setting. In that setting. And yes. so just like listening, you realize you don't have to memorize every person's name that you come across, but you know, you could figure out a way to say similar things or similar patterns in different ways. Yeah. So just make sure you're doing it from genuine sources. That's probably the most important because the real danger here is getting into something that hmm. you probably shouldn't. <laughs> right. So no, the third one is writing. And this is one that a lot of our students struggle with as well, because frankly, they just don't know what to write about. There's so many options. Am, am I supposed to just write about what I see around me? Am I supposed to write it, read a book and write a book review? And those are all really hard, the things to try to wrap our minds around. So what we recommend is an activity that is really, really efficient, even for your whole family. One thing that you can do is have everybody sit down and contribute to a jar. Mm -hmm. Take a jar, place it on the kitchen counter or by the front door, wherever it is, with a stack of little pieces of paper. On each piece of paper, write a word, a phrase, an idiom, a title, a genre, something that you've learned that day in English or that you've thought about in English that day. Write it down, fold it up, put it in the jar. And whenever you have time to write something or whatever, ideally every day, you would go up to it, take one of those pieces of paper out, whatever it is, commit to write at least two sentences, most likely five, maybe more. If you feel like it and you're on a roll, just you go for it. But the idea is, is that you are writing every day and mm. that jar gives you something to write about every day. So you don't have the excuse of, I don't know what to write about. Okay. So make sure you commit to doing that. And before you open that piece of paper, commit to writing whatever is on that piece of paper. This can get really silly, but definitely you can even do it where what's the first thing you think of when you see that word. Mm. Another way to practice writing that I recommend is write a short review of what you just watched or what mm. you just read. That's a great way to write constructively. It's good reading comprehension practice to be able to produce what you just read and reflect on it. Again, reflecting on something you just read or listened to is a great way to integrate skills and you kind of want to do that whenever you can. The fourth skill that you guys can practice on a regular basis is speaking. And this is one that is probably that gets the most 
uh, flack against because a lot of our students say, I don't have a speaking partner, I don't have anyone around me, I don't have an English teacher, I don't have an English tutor, and they give lots of reasons. But the thing is, is that you can practice speaking even mm -hmm. if you're by yourself in your house with no connectivity whatsoever. Speak about whatever you're doing. Uh, I remember when both my children were babies, it was easy for me to just talk to them. They could not understand what I was saying, but I would still talk to them. I would speak Chinese to them. I would just speak English to them. It didn't matter. But the idea is, is that you are practicing speaking. And for them, there's the added benefit of it's helping them learn and listen and they're taking in, they're interacting with you. But by yourself, what you're doing is you're connecting what you're thinking to your mouth and you're making your mouth, you're forcing your mouth to keep up with whatever you're thinking or mm. doing. And that is a really hard thing to do. We both understand that very well. It is very difficult to get your mind of what you know of English up here to your mouth. I can't tell you how many times somebody said something to me in Chinese and I understood exactly what they meant, but I could not get the words organized to say what I meant. That didn't get better until I started speaking Chinese more at home. Yeah, writing is deceptive because with writing, you can write something and even if you have bad handwriting or you write it the wrong way, you can erase it and then write it again. And you can with, go whatever time. <laughs> yeah, with, with speaking, you can't do that. The time, uh, how fast you speak and how many mistakes you make and how many times you have to say the same thing, yeah. all of that contributes to just frustration in the language, yeah. but the more you practice, the more you actually produce sounds out of your mouth, then the more likely you are to be able to improve. And so one of the things I highly recommend you guys do is to use your phone or use your recorder and record yourself speaking, okay. whether it's a speech or whether it's something that's happening around you, record yourself speaking and then listen back to it. Because a lot of times we can hear those mistakes and we, we can change them. It's useful to have a language tutor to fine tune those pronunciation errors, but a lot of work can be done just by internalizing it and trying to listen to it ourselves yeah. as well. Another thing you can do is do a vlog and you don't have to publish it. You don't have to publish it online, but do a vlog and keep a record of your lang English language learning journey by speaking a little bit every day or every week, just regularly. doesn't matter what the frequency is, just do it regularly. And what's cool is that you'll be able to reference back to that to mm. see how well you've progressed, which is a great confidence boost, mm. I think, to be able to hear yourself get better over time. Number five would be just make sure you integrate skills wherever you can. We talked about that in a previous video just recently, so definitely check that out. We're gonna link that up and card up here in the description somewhere, but definitely check back to learn how to integrate skills. And we're gonna talk about that in the coming videos as well. So four things that you can do to be more successful in your language learning journey. The first one is it doesn't matter how long you take, but it matters how often you do it. So for example, a person that has a big, lang a big language goal that has a very big time crunch, yes, they may spend an hour a day or two hours a day learning English, and that's really, really good. But if you are very busy and you don't have that time, then it's better for you to spend five, 10 minutes a day for every day, as opposed to three hours in one day and nothing for the rest of the week. Yes, you are working on building consistency and you need to build it into your lifestyle. You need to build it into your life. So that means speaking English at home with your kids. It means watching English shows and movies, even though it's not as restful as watching them in your own language. Mm. It means you need to do that and take those steps because you're already taking the time out to watch a movie. Why not also integrate your language learning at the same time. The thing is, is you want to build that culture in your home, which means you need to do it simultaneously with other things that you already do. Again, quality is more important than quantity. So if you are going to do a rigid study plan, then you need to make sure you are doing that well. It does no good to study English for six hours a day if you're exhausted and you hate most of it. Okay, that just doesn't work. We've been there, done that. It doesn't work to slave away for a test because after the test, you're going to forget it. Right. So if the goal is to acquire English, then you need to be building it into your lifestyle. The second thing is do not use subtitles. Ah. When you're watching a TV series or a movie, and I understand, but you don't want to use subtitles when you're watching a movie in English because you need to be listening. Mm. And you need to take in the paralanguage of the characters within that TV series or that movie. 
If you are reading subtitles of your own language, let's be honest, you stop listening to the English and you completely ignore the 70% of meaning communicated by body language. Yeah. If you're watching those words at the bottom of the screen, you're not looking at the context. Yeah. It is incredibly important. Context determines meaning in so many ways. So you really need to be taking in all of the language, which means take those words out. Take the words out from the bottom of the screen because it's a crutch. And if you are an intermediate speaker, those need to be gone anyway. Yeah. So if you are a beginning speaker, it's okay some, but don't get used to it. You need to get you need to kick those out as soon as you can. Way number three that we've talked about multiple times already is to plan ahead. Yes. Don't wait to the last minute. Don't wait till you're starting your time, your English study time. Don't wait till you started opening the book to figure out which book are you going to read. You need to start doing that well ahead of time, and that's something that honestly is a little easier to do when you've already when you've already been exhausted after a whole day. Yeah. or you, you come back from work and you're like, I just want to rest. Well, one of the things you can do is to try to look at some other YouTube videos, look at some podcasts and figure out which one you're going to listen to tomorrow for breakfast or tomorrow at lunch or whatever that is. Plan ahead mm -hmm. so that you can use your time more efficiently. For sure. And then number four, and we've already hit on this, so we're not going to spend much time on it, is integrate those skills wherever you can. Whenever you can do speaking and listening, do it. Whenever you can read and speak, do that. Whenever you can listen and write, do that. You should integrate as much as you can because the more you are integrating at the same time, the better. That's it for us today, guys. Make sure if you like videos like this and you want to learn more about how to successfully acquire the English language, then subscribe. There's more videos coming out. I'm really excited about it over the next few weeks because there's a lot coming out on how to create a language learning culture within the home. So subscribe, come back and see us, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.